are listening to a review by The Dead Prussian, a podcast about war and warfare. G'day listeners and welcome to the second of The Dead Prussian Review episodes. These shorter episodes aim to provide you with a quick review of a text of any form that I have found useful. Each product reviewed on the show will either be reviewed by myself, your gracious host, or someone who has met our secret expert criteria. I will also use this fortnightly episode as a way to provide you. I will also use this fortnightly episode to provide you with updates on our planned guest list and any other important bits of information that we think you, the Dead Prussian community, should know. Before I get to this episode's review, though, I have to thank. The listeners who have provided us some reviews on iTunes, completed the survey on the website, or emailed us directly with some feedback. We're also in shock at the success of the show this year. We have been smashing our 2016 download records and February looks like it is going to continue this upward trend. We are working on the car audio playback issues, so thank you for letting us know about those. If you are still having trouble over the next few episodes... Please email us, tell us what episode has been problematic, and we'll review our procedures. I'm also keen to thank listeners S and A for their donations through our support tab on the website. And lastly, before we get to the review, I have a top non-secret mission for the Dead Prussian community. Your mission, that I've chosen to accept for you on your behalf, is to tell one person about the show. They should be someone who is not already a listener and who would actually enjoy listening to the show. Please don't recommend us to someone who is a hater, because haters are just going to hate. Rightio then, time for me to stop parroting on like a galah about the show and actually talk about something more worthy of your time. This episode we are reviewing the book The Human Face of War by Professor Jim Storr, a former British Army officer and now academic who teaches and speaks regularly on war studies and defence issues. This book is not in the vein of Big Carl's work. This is not a philosophical look at war full of dialectics. This is a book about warfare. Plainly stated, it is about the conduct of war. In fact, if I was going to label this book as anything, I think I would label it as pragmatic. It leverages some of the work of Archer Jones and provides easy to understand concepts and frameworks, such as the generic model of troop types on page 65, or the diagram on the factors that create and result from surprise and shock on the battlefield. That can be found on page 84. I'm a pretty simple fella, and diagrams help me understand complex concepts. I know a lot of you out there are quite simple too, and probably would benefit from some of these clear explanations and diagrams. For those that are looking for another book on grand strategy, or one on modern strategy that encapsulates more than the fighting aspects, I would suggest that you wait until my interview next week. Storr's book is rooted in the fight, and that is, for those of us knee-deep in strategy reading at the moment, a refreshing change of pace. Sometimes it's good to grab a book and read in the trenches. The chapter on command and decision-making shows some decision-making models, and this is towards the back end of the book, so it makes quite a fascinating read. Storr examines multiple professionals, multiple occupations, and compares them to military command. He also goes into the details of decision-making in high-pressure and complex environments. If old Sun Tzu was right about knowing yourself, then Storr has the chapter to provide a good level of self-examination. In discussing the genius of command, Storr does not mythologise particular commanders. He studies them and seeks to understand the characteristics of those that excelled as decision makers in the crucible of combat. He uses both qualitative and quantitative methods to demonstrate why one commander may have excelled at something another struggled with. The use of data makes Storr's conclusions all the more compelling. Now, listeners, I must warn you, the book's disposition is not as sunny as mine. There are some rather concerning conclusions throughout the book, one being 
an outline of the trend where armies seem to forget old lessons and the tendency for some commanders to turn to an authoritarian approach to mask their inadequacies. Storr also discusses the limited amount of learning that is possible for armies to do during peacetime. I read this book around 2014, about five years after it was written, and I must tell you, it knocked my socks off. I found it clearly articulated arguments and issues that I'd failed to adequately express. I also managed to meet Jim during a speaking tour of Australia and have him sign my book. That's not necessarily important for you to know, except that my copy of this book will always surpass any copy you have. Unless, of course, you also have a signed copy with a very personal message such as To Mick, with best wishes. The book was published as part of the Birmingham War Studies series by Continuum Books in the UK in 2009, and it's available from online bookstores. As you know, we have a rating system for this section of our series. The system rates a text out of five, just like when you give us five stars on iTunes. We don't use stars, though. We use Carl's. And as you know, a Carl is a measure of something's Carlness. Now, I am about to give this book a Carl rating, but I should give you a snippet to demonstrate its Carlness first. So in the book, Store states, War is strife usually between nations, conducted by force. Warfare is a state of war, campaigning, being engaged in war. How many Carls do I give this book? Well, I give it five Carls, listeners. The reason I give it five Carls is because it is brief, informative, pragmatic, and it delivers exactly what it promises. The author's willingness to sign my copy may also have helped in its Carlness. Now, loyal listeners, you will find that it will be rare that we review anything on the show that hits below a 4 or a 5 Carl rating. This is because, well, we just don't want to waste your time. And I'd also rather you all read what I read, and then you will think like me, and I'll finally get some laughs. Come on, where are the laughs? That's the end of this review episode. Thanks again for the massive response to... The interview with Corey Sharkey, what an amazing guest she was. Next week, I'll have an interview with Hal Brands on Grand Strategy for you. It won't be out in time for Valentine's Day, but then again, you all ain't my Valentines. Until next time, listeners, grab a book and crack on. Join the conversation with us on Twitter at Dead Prussian Pod on Facebook at The Dead Prussian page or on our website www.thedeadprussian.com. All show notes for this episode as well as copyright information can be found on the website. The Dead Prussian podcast is written, produced and hosted by Mick Cook. It is co-produced by Amanda Levito. The music used throughout is Caught in the Beat by Broke for Free and is used under a Creative Commons attribution licence. All opinions expressed by individuals on the podcast are those of the individual and not necessarily representative of any other organisation.